Welcome to Righteous Living episode 11. It's been, uh, I think, a week without um, a new episode. So, in episode 10, we were talking about um, strategies and some of the ways the devil uses to tempt people and get to us. So, without taking much of your time, let's continue with further words certain uses to get to us as well as how we can overcome and have victory over them victory over temptation is one of the things that will help us to live a holy life and just righteous lives in general that are pleasing to the lord so number one for today is certain uses the secrets uh, strategy or hiding strategy this is where he makes people feel comfortable to do something as long as no one will find out but then he blindfolds people don't forget we are told in second corinthians chapter 4 that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the people. So the devil will make you think no one is seeing what you're doing. He will make you even forget or not respect what the Bible says when, when we are taught that God sees everything. I always love to say that even when it comes to relationships, secret relationships will give birth to sin because you are not accountable to anybody but just the two of you. But if, if, if people, let's say your, your mentors, your families know about your relationship, that is how you will know how to carry yourselves because whatever mistake, or maybe when you mess up, it won't just affect the two of you, but even the people that know about your relationship. So Satan blindfolds and keeps people in darkness. And he shuts our spirits so that we may not be exposed to the light of God. Ananias and Sapphira, for example, in Acts chapter 5, they made a pledge. And when the money came in, they never fulfilled their pledge. And the Apostle Peter said to them, Why have you allowed Satan to deceive you? So the devil uses secrets to tempt people and to keep people away from God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, the Bible tells us that everything is open before God. Nothing is hidden. So the devil should not make you feel as if no one is seeing what you're doing. People may not see what you're doing, but God is seeing whatever you're doing. Nothing is hidden from his sight. So Joseph, on the other hand, in the Old Testament, was able to overcome because he reminded himself that even if no one was going to find out that he had an affair with Potiphar's wife, the fear of the Lord is what helped him overcome that temptation. So like I mentioned, people may not see what you're doing, but God is able to see. So like Apostle Fred also puts it, we should be able to have integrity in our lives. And he defines integrity as doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I define integrity as remaining true, no matter where you are, no matter who is with you. So beloved saints, we should be able to fear God. We should live a holy life publicly, privately, everywhere we go, no matter who we are with. The number two, the other strategy the enemy uses to tempt us or get to us is that he promises people quick success. This is called the bargaining strategy. Now, he mainly uses this strategy by making people see what they can get quickly if they are to compromise. For example, this is where young ladies will feel, or maybe not just young ladies, but even just women in general will feel it's not a big deal for them to sleep with someone in order for them to get the promotion they need. 
So the devil promises people quick success. But that quick success will come if they pay the price of compromising and disobeying God. So that's how the devil keeps many people in bondage. And such a foundation gives birth to a sinful life becoming normal. If it's condoned and entertained, a sinful life will become normal. Remember, when he was tempting Jesus, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world, the beauty of the world, and he said, I'm going to give you all that. If only you can worship me. So, we should not allow the beauty that we see with our eyes to tempt us or take us to a place where we are going to disobey God. So he uses quick success as a means of taking people away from God. Sometimes he tells you, God is going to forgive you. You are not the first one. So you will think, it's, it's okay, let me just go for it. Sometimes you, the devil will, will be telling you, no, no one is holy, everybody does it. Everybody messes up once in a while. He is doing that because he wants to steal from your life. He wants to destroy your life. So don't listen to the voice of Satan. And lastly for today, Satan uses problems, challenges to make God's people become hopeless and to make them feel helpless. He uses problems. And this is what I can call the oppressing or burdening strategy. So the devil is able to bring a lot of afflictions and oppressions or pressures of life that will make many people, including the people of God, to give in to sin out of fear and frustration. Jesus said, I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. You are going to face troubles, you are going to have problems, but take heart, I've already overcome the world. So the devil will make you feel, if you are not going to do anything about it, you will keep on suffering. My beloved, since many years ago, the Lord gave me a quote, I would rather be poor than to have sin sponsor me. So don't allow problems, don't allow the challenges that you're going through to make you disobey God. That's one of the major strategies of the devil. He uses the problems, the challenges, the pressures of this life to make people compromise. And when you become hopeless, it's very easy for you to do just anything for the sake of survival. You will no longer care about consequences. And that's why God says, I know the plans I have for you. Not just to give you a future. He says to give you a hope. So the devil wants to make you hopeless. Wants, wants to make you feel hopeless. But God wants to give you hope for the future. Don't listen to the voice of Satan. There are many people out there today who have done many bad things in the name of things got so bad that my only means of survival Maybe it was to steal, was to lie, maybe cheat, or maybe fake my documents. But let me tell you and give you an example. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they never disobeyed God, no matter the pressure that came their way. They maintained that they would still remain loyal to God no matter the challenges and the consequences that could come their way, they said they were not going to defile themselves. They were not going to disobey God. Even if they were going to be thrown in the fire, even if Daniel was going to be thrown in the, in the den of lions, he said he was not going to defile himself. Joseph, no matter the challenges that he faced in the book of Genesis, he held on to the words and the path of the Lord. So beloved sense, challenges should not be an excuse for us to fail or fall into sin. We should always pray for grace that God is going to help us, that no matter the problems, we are going to hold on to him.
So don't forget what I've mentioned today. The devil uses secrets. Nothing is hidden. The devil uses, he, uh, uh, he promises people quick success. It may seem as if it's delayed, but be prescient. God says it will surely come to pass. And he uses problems. But when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the fire, the Lord is with you. No matter the challenges, we are assured of God's presence. In Hebrews 13 verse 5, God says, He will never leave nor forsake us. Beloved says, you're never hopeless. And you're never helpless. You're never alone. No matter the temptations, God is going to provide a way out for us. Next time, we are going to focus on how we can overcome and have victory over temptation practically from the word of God. May God bless you and shalom, shalom.